Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer Kickstarter card game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is by Tabulet Games, and it's called Volfirion. Volfirion is a two-player game that takes about 15 to a half an hour to play, and it's for ages eight and up. In the game Volfirion, you're going to start with your own deck of cards, and it's going to be 10, and it is going to be for you, and then one for your opponent. You're also going to receive city cards, and city cards are going to be placed in front of you. You can actually go ahead and place different units on cities, as well as be placing buildings on cities, and those things can stay there for the duration that the city is in play. This is like a similar deck builder as to any other one you've probably played before, but with some unique differences. The first thing that is different is, of course, the city tiles, in which case they can be removed or destroyed by defeating their defense. Another way is uh, to increase the defense of a city is to place guards on it that will protect it and increase the difficulty of the uh, city to be destroyed, as well as something else that's unique, which is Valfirion himself. And the game is called Valfirion because you have a miniature that you'll be using throughout the game. You can choose to summon him and bring him to certain locations or take him off of your board. And if he stays in a location for too long, that location will become destroyed regardless of the defense of it. Basically, you have the ability to summon a monster monster and allow it to move around the board, destroying certain areas. Not only that, but there's certain little pieces of treasure that Valfirian is going to have to offer. As long as you're able to defeat these treasures or attack them with your cards, you can gain them. And just like any other deck builder, there'll be a stack of cards in which you're going to be able to pick from among many different types of cards, whether they're going to be uh, heroes or whether they're going to be simple cards that you, you go ahead and play throughout the game, or if you're going to be playing cards like this one here, which is a tower. And then of course you're going to replace them. It's going to go turn by turn throughout the game, so somebody's going to take their turn by playing their hand, and then they're ending the turn drawing back up their hand size, and the next player is going to get to go. Now the idea is you're going to try and destroy your opponent's city, and if you can go ahead and do that, you're going to win the game. Alright, let's go ahead and take a look at Valfirion. So here we have Volfirion and all of the components in the game, along with this 3D miniature, which I'm sure there's a way you're going to be able to get it in the campaign, and it is gorgeous. I'm just going to go ahead and shout it out right now. Uh, there is this little piece here that could be used as Valfirion as well. I'm guessing that's for a basic pledge, and this works just as well. It's actually really nice. Okay, so here is what you got. You're going to have your 10 cards, which make up your deck. You're going to get a bunch of prospectors, and then you're going to get a captain and a diviner, and there's three types of currency. You're going to have the attack, you're going to have the uh, gold currency, which allows you to purchase cards over here and then you're going to have these crystals which will either allow you to move Valfirian around to your opponent's cities or you'll be able to use it to turn these items off and on presuming that you have them and uh, you can also do it to your you can obviously do it to your opponents so those are the main three types of currency right and you'll take this deck of cards here and you're going to shuffle it all up just like any other deck builder and then you're going to set it over here these areas over here are your city locations. You're going to get three, and it has their defense, eight, nine, and ten. And then, of course, you're going to have the box of the game, and uh, these, this deck over here, which represents the Valfirian treasures, which you can gain from the attack. And over here, which is your stack of cards, which you can gain throughout your turn. Uh, and these are the four that's going to come out, and the big stack, and it comes with a whole bunch of stuff here. That is pretty much all you're getting with the game Valfirian. All right, let's come on and talk about a turn of play, and then I'll go ahead and show you one. Valfirian is a two player player elimination deck builder and what that means is a 1v1 and the person who gets eliminated first is the loser and the other person is the winner. Get your 10 cards and you're going to go ahead and shuffle it and draw your 5 and then you're going to simply play all those cards and utilize all the resources provided on them. So if I had 3 prospectors that's 3 of the gold currency and then if I had the captain that's 3 attack and then if I had the prospector that is 1 more gold so that would be a total of 4 and 3. I'd be able to purchase anything I want on the left hand side of the board and on the right hand side of the board. I could also choose to move Valfirian along the city or away from my city and back to his cave and if I had enough I could move it from my city to his cave back to my opponent's city which is really nice as well. I can also then use everything in my tableau including any guards or a sit or, or like buildings that are attached to these cities and I could also use any treasures I've gathered and they stay in play. Another thing you can do is go ahead and turn off treasures if it's on your opponent's side or turn them back on if your opponent turned yours off and it has a cost written there. After you're done using everything you can you're going to go ahead and take everything off of your tableau except for the uh, cities that have cards on them and all your treasures or artifacts and you're going to go ahead and discard them and then draw your next hand and your next opponent is going to get to go and you're just going to go back and forth like that until cities are destroyed. The the last thing you can do that I didn't mention is the most important thing in my opinion, and that is destroying cities. You're going to need to have enough attack. This specific one says you need to have 10, and of course if there's guards on it, it might increase to more, but if you have enough, you can go ahead and defeat that. So you're building your deck in order
order to grant you attack and you want to build it a certain way in order to pro make that process go quicker but if you want you can change it up and use Valkyrian to do the dirty work for you. Nevertheless though that's the basic idea of the game let's go ahead and show you a quick game of Valkyrian. So we're back to the game now, and as you can see, it's pretty much set up as it was because it didn't need to get any fixed out of just the four cards here, the two here, the deck for this side here, and the deck for this side here. I've got either of my miniatures, just gonna use one of them. I'm gonna use a nice fancy one. And then of course, each player is gonna draw their five cards. So we'll go ahead and give him five as well. Make sure you shuffle your deck of 10 cards. Then go ahead and play them. And you can go ahead and play them in any order you want, but they basically all just go down onto your tableau. You're gonna be utilizing them all and adding up their total sums. One, two, three, and four. So that's four of the circle currency. And of course, this is where you buy them. So maybe you want to have, oh, I don't know, this one here. That one looks pretty nice. And that is going to cost you two and two. So you're going to simply put it into your discard pile. And uh, that will be used for a later date. Of course, they have you have one left, but there's nothing here that's going to give you uh, a currency for one specific card. So you might have to just burn that currency. Then over here, you've got a three for attack. Now, as you can see over here, there's a nine, eight, and a ten. These are much too high right now for you to be able to defeat them. So what you can do with that attack attack is simply go ahead and choose one of these cards as long as you have enough for them. And of course, there are three right now, so that's perfect. You can go ahead and pick one up if you want. And I think I would go ahead and pick up this one here because it provides a lot more resources than this one, although this has a nicer ability on it. So I'm going to go ahead and take the dive for that. I'm going to put the strange box right over there and I'm just turned on. And now my last little bit here is I have three currency as far as turning off artifacts go or moving Valfurion. Valfurion costs eight to move to any location and he unfortunately uh, does not have eight. He's only got that three, but I think because he purchased this one here, he's going to increase in for two more. So you might have five, but nevertheless, he's not gonna be able to pick that up, uh, purchase that. So what's gonna end up happening is that's going to burn as well. After that, everything that is not going to stay stationary on your tableau is gonna go ahead and be put into your discard pile. Keep your artifacts so you can see them somewhere nice and safe. And then you're going to pass a turn after drawing your next hand of five cards. As you can see, you only start with a couple cards. So you're gonna expect to see the same cards over and over again for a while, just like any other deck builder. Now the next player is going to go ahead and start. Uh, you're going to go ahead and flip over cards to refill the pool so that every single uh, time everybody's going to get four and two. So you can have the same purchasing strength. And he's got one, two, three, four, and five, and then three, five. So he can't buy anything here because he doesn't have the captain, but he can pick up anything here that he wants. A one, four, three, and four. He can actually pick up two cards. Maybe he'll want this one here, and maybe he'll want this one over here. In which case, that's going to be his five. He's got three extra, but he can't use that. Uh, he can actually use it. Yes, he can. He can turn off this artifact. So that's going to be pretty useful, actually. So we'll turn that off so that I don't have access to it my next turn. And then after that, play passes once again, and you're going to go ahead and flip over these cards here. These don't need to flip because they, they're stationary because nobody bought anything. And now he's got his new five cards. There he's got all five currency, so he can't uh, turn this back on, unfortunately. But he can purchase anything he wants here. And in fact, he can pick up these two cards, a four and a one, and put it there. Then these are all going to go into here. And of course, he'll shuffle his deck just like any other deck builder. And then he's going to go ahead and redraw his hand of five cards. And the next player is going to get to go. And it's going to go back and forth. Now, that's the basic idea of the game as far as turns go. There are heroes or guards that can be placed here. When you purchase them, you can go ahead and put them on your cities. Any of the cities can have one guard and they can have one building as well. Let's go ahead and see if I can find a building location to show you. This is a building location. And in fact, I want to make sure that I didn't actually pick up a building in either of the decks. Hopefully I didn't. So that would have been a little bit of a mess, 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 misplay, but... It uh, looks like I did, yes. Yeah, so this would have actually been played here. So here is another building, and it could have gone here if, it, if you wanted to. And so that is how you can place a building and a guard down. Each card can have two of them, right? So you can actually gain currency. That's, these are stationary that stay on your turn, and you're going to gain static currency. There are two defense to this building, or simply two currency every turn. And also, every card has bonus abilities, and the bonuses are found down below. This says if you remove a card from play, whether it be in your discard or anywhere, you can then go ahead and gain three of this specific currency. This one here says as long as you played a red card on your turn you can remove one of your cards which can be beneficial in getting rid of cards from the field or from your hand that you do not want and then of course you're going to have the main cards which are things like this one here which is removing a card will give you two currency uh, these one over here is if you have a green card you get to draw an extra card from your deck removing a card will give you six removing a card will give you three so on and so forth they're pretty simple some of them don't have them they're usually they're going to be your starting cards and then of course your artifacts will also have them down below as well that's pretty useful and they are going to be 
uh, basically being put on your city spaces that's going to help you throughout the game. You're going to want to have as many stationary cards before you draw your five as you possibly can because that's going to give you the most currency, right? Which will allow you to move these guys. Uh, so then we'll talk about Valfurion a little bit here. Valfurion, of course, can be moved with eight. And if he's on your city, uh, you can move him for eight and then eight more, which is 16 and place him on any city you want. If your opponent doesn't pay for him after his turn is over, he's going to go back here and destroy a city. If all of your cities are destroyed, the game is going to end. And not only that, but if you choose to, maybe you don't want to deal with pesky Valfurion and you've got a lot of attack, you can simply spend 16 and defeat Valfurion and then you'll gain an extra city, which will actually help you because it'll give you more cards to place in your tableau. And that pesky other opponent is not going to be able to utilize him and place him on your cities anymore. So that's powerful. And his own base is going to give you a plus four in your attack. So it's a stationary plus four. So, and he has a plus nine defense. So not, not too bad if you want to do that. So you get a bunch of different, uh, a bunch of variety as to where you want to place uh, your, your Valfurion or whether you want to destroy him or whether you want to attack cities directly and then how you want to build your deck. Of course, there's going to be a certain point in time when you're going to want to simply start being more offensive than defensive because it is a two player game, but you're just basically trying to eliminate your opponent's cities. And once you do that, you win. That's the basic idea of Valfurion. Hopefully you understand a good deal of it. Let's come up and talk about what I think about it. Okay, so let's go ahead and talk about the game. But first, one or two caveats. The first thing is when you defeat Valfurion, you're going to get his lair and you're also getting the artifacts that are attached to it. That's pretty good. So basically you're going to get a bonus um, victory condition, which will allow you to stay alive a little longer, as well as bonus cards that will be have to be turned off unless uh, they do not do that. Then you're going to gain more resources on your turn. And also whenever you purchase an artifact, you have this little breaking symbol, which means you can actually remove a card as well. There's a bunch of different ways to remove cards. And that's because you want deck thinning because you want your best possible 10 cards you can have, or at least your best possible 15. Uh, usually you're not going to have a huge deck in this game due to the fact that you'll be removing cards a lot of the time. But that's the basic idea, right? It's a two player deck builder that has the elimination factor and it has that quick build. It's a fast deck builder. It's really easy to understand, really easy to learn. I taught this game probably about five or six minutes when we first played the game and uh, had a lot of fun with it. Uh, all of the artwork, this is from the creators of Miss Thea, if I do uh, know so correctly, and their artwork is fantastic. I mean, really, really good. I love all the artwork. There's not a lot, there's not all of the artwork currently on the cards I have, so you'll be seeing some stuff in the campaign uh, that will be showing you differently. But there is a good amount of different art in the cards here, and they are all wonderful, just like Miss Thea. If you like Miss Thea as far as artwork goes, you're going to enjoy this one as well. Uh, the deck builder itself is fun because it's quick and easy to learn. That's That was my main aspect with it. Uh, I, if it was more than two players and it was player elimination, I wouldn't like it straight up because I don't want to play a deck builder where I'm eliminating players and then they have to just sit out and do nothing. But in a 1v1 fashion, I really, really enjoyed this game. Um, it, it functions just like any other one, though, right? It Draw your cards, play them, gather stuff. What's unique about it is, of course, Valfurion. He's the one that's the most unique aspect because you're going to be utilizing him throughout the game. But if you don't want to, you can go ahead and directly attack your opponent. But at what cost? Because if you don't manipulate your deck correctly and have enough resources to move Valfurion away, Valfurion will kill you far before your opponent does because he costs less resources to move and utilize. So you have to go ahead and decide what is best for you. Overall, the strategy of the game is excellent. It provides a nice palette cleanser as to just playing a simple deck builder. Now, of course, um, I had my I'd ask my cameraman what he thought about the game, and he was just like on the nose about it. He's just like another deck builder. But for me, I really enjoy the fact that it's really, really quick. It fits in one box, and it's something I can take pretty much anywhere to play a single deck builder. And most of the time when I'm sitting around uh, just wanting to play with somebody, I usually only have one other person. So most deck builders, you kind of want to play with more players. And in this case, it works really, really well because it's just a head-to-head -head competitive game, and you do feel the might of Valfurion, as well as you start to see how you're losing and you have to determine how you need to come back and there are ways to come back in the game because you have the ability to start utilizing either the attacks maybe you want to put more buildings down or pick up more of the different artifacts these things are important and it will change the way of flow for the game your opponent might be simply going attack 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 and then all of a sudden he realizes that Valfurion is at his gates twice in a row he's down to one city left now he has to start buying that other resource to move him away which completely messes up his his kind of method as to how he wants to do it it does still give you the ability to kind of fine-tune your deck how you want it but at what cost right so overall I really enjoyed this game this is definitely one of my favorite decks Deck builders, especially for a two-player variant. There's a couple other ones I like a little more that because they play four or five players, and because of that, those are probably a little higher. But for a two-player deck builder, this is I 
I think this is probably my favorite two-player deck builder so far. I enjoy it. It's up to you to decide whether you like it or not. Do go ahead and let me know in the description below if it's interesting to you, and you can check it out uh, in the comments below. Come and check out the description below if you're interested in checking out the Kickstarter for Valfurion, creators of Mysthea. I wouldn't, I wouldn't pass up taking a look at this game, honestly. Do check it out. All right, guys, thanks for watching another Unfiltered Gamer Kickstarter board game review. If you like this video, go and check out our stuff for videos. If you new YouTube, like, subscribe, and comment. All this help would be greatly appreciated. Like, subscribe, comment. Those are important things. They do help me, so it's, it lets me know that what I'm doing is worthwhile to you. Uh, also, let me know if I'm completely wrong with my reviews. I, I love hearing criticism. Uh -huh. uh, check out Valfurion in the description below if it sounds like something you'd be interested in. Two-player deck builder, as well as checking out our website, unfilteredgamer.com. If nothing else, there's free giveaways for games. We're giving away tons of games every month. You can pick them up there. And if you want everythingboardgames.com and the Giveaway Game, two great sites that offer a bunch of great reviews and giveaways as well. All right, guys, that's all I got this time. And as always, I wish you a happy Halloween month, and I hope to see you guys next time.